Okay, checking my levels, one, two. I'm gonna move into the space now. Let's get some system audio going through here. Okay, looking good. What we're looking at here is the possibility to actually have a narrative while I'm doing this. I don't know what that flashing is, that's a drag. See if I can try to stop that, maybe with a smaller screen size. Is that the problem? Maybe. A little bit better, I don't know. Get around, get some system sound there. Let's make sure our space is okay. Okay, we're coming onto the campus here now. Okay, nice, very smooth. Working very well the campus, a little bit slow down here, not sure why. I'm gonna go ahead and move around on my screens a little bit to get some things organized here. I'm gonna include this over to here. And come back onto here, okay? Let's get moving here. A little bit jerky. Not too smooth. Let's go to the negotiation space. Okay, we're going to end up here in the negotiation space where each group has their own office. Just doing some pre check here to make sure that we don't have any strange drop ins, for example. That was a big something dropped in there that needs to be removed, probably. Students do this, though. We give them the power to go ahead and add things like post-it notes, but in reality, sometimes they randomly drop things and don't clean up after themselves. Bit of a problem with that. Okay, I'm doing a little bit of pre-check here before the class begins. We're just about to get students in. And I've set up these yellow post-it notes here in order to help students indicate to each group whether they're buyers or sellers, so it's very helpful. Okay. Get these right outside here of their space. And this helps them to send out some signals to see who is a buyer, who is a seller, and what some of their negotiation positions are. Very, very helpful. Hello, Anna. Hello, hello. Anna, I can hear you, I can hear you. Yeah, finally. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. It's, it's good for you. I'll, I'll do it. Yeah. yeah, go. Okay, so I'm going to let the students see me maybe today. Sometimes I'm invisible, sometimes I let them see me. I'm going to let them see me and I'm going to do some running commentary for you. So you can see what's going on and uh, when they see me they also tend to try to use their English a little bit more although I won't talk to them too much I don't want to interfere we are having many negotiations uh, I think a total of eight or nine negotiations so we have many opportunities to work hard on this and as it comes into the semester they'll take it more, and more serious the technical issues pop off the people who don't really have a motivation to not show up at all. Uh, uh, I think we, sh we should say the boss, boss product. Yeah. Yeah, he said. Oh, really? What kind of quality and delivery is this We We are not delivery and no quality. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. And, and then it's <laughs> sorry. quite difficult for us to buy for you. But what if you increase your quality and delivery, we can take into consideration. Okay, what kind of delivery and the quality need? High delivery, high quality, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I got it. So 200 units is the price of 
Could it go lower because it's only 200 boxes? How about... Yes. Ah, good. Using the uh, sticky board there. Using the uh, what do you call this? Using this very good idea. Help people see you. So you're a buyer. I see. Very good. No, thank you. Yes. What can I help you with? Yes, that's right. You want to come and see me? Yes. Uh, I think you need to be focusing on the simulation today. So if you want to talk to me, probably the best thing is to come see me. Uh, this week it was all pretty good. Um, let me see. Are you going to be around school on Tuesday, tomorrow? Um, uh, my times are pretty flexible. I'll be around all day tomorrow. Okay, that'll probably be pretty good for me. Thank you. Okay, so, uh, we'll add, uh, seven, eight, eight, four. Okay, uh, Thank you. That's an example of interaction with a student. It's pretty normal. Students want to talk. I try to keep students focused on the simulation during the game. And that's why usually I actually make myself invisible. Although even if invisible, students can still find me as the administrator. Even when you're invisible, they can transport to you. Because even invisible avatars, you can see from this list here on the left where they are and you can just transport to someone. So uh, that student had a question and I try to put the questions off to office hours rather than regular times. Uh, we're going to focus on the simulation today. So now I think we're still having the time at the beginning of the simulation where students are checking out who are buyers, who are sellers, and what their initial opening positions are and usually technical problems may be encountered here with students that have been taking this semester fairly serious getting in early having no problem and others having issues if they didn't practice more so let's come over and listen to some students now Just as we were walking up here, I could hear the echo, so some students' microphone is open, 
and luckily they did turn it off. If they didn't, I can right click on a user and I can force a mute to stop that feedback from happening. Uh, luckily the student did understand that and turned it off. But of course that doesn't solve the problem, which is the student is not using a headphone or they're using a headphone microphone, but their audio is over the speaker. This is a never ending difficulty. Let's uh, listen in here for what these guys are doing. We have class going on here. I'm just standing in the corner looking around. From here we can see the different meeting areas of the groups. We gotta head and move out here and see what's going on. I've allowed the students basically to make up their own rules outside of the basic supply and demand rules for each group's products, quality, delivery, those kinds of things. The prices and the importance of the negotiation are set by the game and that's kind of random. Buyer and seller positions are also random. And so what students do outside of those is really no control. I don't, don't try to control it at all. I let it be dynamic. And I created these offices thinking that they'd be great for students to have a location to make plans. But what students often tend to do is walk around on the outside and uh, just talk to each other, find out who's a buyer or seller, and ask what group they belong to. So I just let it kind of free flow and see how that goes. Let's uh, see if we can listen in on what some are doing here. Seems to be a, uh, a grouping here. Uh, nothing much going on. Of course, there's nothing to stop students from texting each other. They use things such as Skype or Facebook or even cell phones to call each other. So again, I don't really regulate that because even if I did, there's not much I can do. I just try to make it so that they can use a telephony space like this and they get to see what it's like. Here we see over there some people inside that office. Maybe something's going on. Let's go check it out. That's a good example. When we're outside, you cannot hear what's happening inside. They're totally soundproof and vice versa, we're inside, we cannot hear what anybody says outside. Probably these people are texting each other through their computers, through some texting programs, maybe using Facebook to communicate, which again, you know, nothing much I can do about that. Okay, I know how many units you need. Um, how about, um, Four hundred units. Four hundred units. Four hundred units. Yes. Okay. Four hundred units. Four hundred units. Uh, One thousand four hundred negotiation has some complexity because we have some products that are uh, odd prices. I'm selling the products in boxes. The boxes come in. Uh, groups holding different amounts of products and we have two products that they're separately negotiating for but the products go together as a bundle so a lot of marketing ideas included in here bundling well, pricing. How about one thousand and three hundred fifty dollars for four hundred units. One thousand three hundred you can see yes. here the students are going to really go slow in trying to get their numbers straight, so it's very challenging for them. I could only accept $1,400.
Okay, one one thousand The good thing about this is usually my Taiwan students' numerical capabilities are quite yeah. strong, so they can okay. figure things out. Okay. The weaknesses in self-expression and Thank getting you. those negotiations moving, also taking risk and also pushing on the extreme edge of trying to maximize. Hello. I'm going to I saw product B. Huh? I saw product B. Yes. Do you want to sell? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Um, what's your quality and the delivery? Uh, both are low. Both are four. No, no. No. <laughs> yeah. Oh. But we need a high quality and the average delivery. Oh. But if you if we offer you best price. Mm hmm. Mm, can I accept the light? Uh well, let me think about it. So can you use your flat point to upgrade your quality and the delivery? Um, and uh, I think maybe we both can use face point because our face point face point is not is not is low. You know, you know. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and how about if we we use three flash point to average and then maybe you can use two to uh to lower your your quality or something like this, you know. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because this is a great example of students trying to understand the complexity of the game. We have in the game a thing called flex points those flex points allow the different groups to do different things produce more change their quality for certain items for certain lots and they can also make flex points by selling at an advantage over what their initial position is so a little bit of complexity but i really understand that it's hard to begin with but after a few weeks you can see students really get good at it and I like the way they exchange that information with each other it's got to be hard using it in a foreign language and trying to keep track of the numbers which today's is a little bit complicated and then also trying to talk to each other about how the underlying game rules work so really a lot of information for the students to ingest uh, wait a moment. No table. Mm -hmm. You can see that sometimes, you know, things go slow. Uh, wait a minute, uh, hold on, let me think about it, are very common responses our students have. And it really shows the uh, intellectual application that needs to be injected into a class like this negotiation where students can really practice many of the things they've learned in all of their business classes especially the marketing classes the advantage of having it inside this space is it keeps students interested because it has that game like atmosphere although it's nothing like a game it also allows them to do things like say wait a minute and they are not seen people don't look at them people don't uh, you know have the whole thing where you're right in front of someone in the classroom this would be really hard in a classroom to ask students to come up to the front of the class or to be inside the class and to do things like okay can you tell this other group to wait a minute while you think about it and where would they go what would they do uh, you know how does that work and then other students can see them so often in ESL classes you practice language by having a group come up and kind of do a performance the problem with that is it becomes more about a play or, or acting something out. Uh, or, if it's not that way, if you emphasize students to really practice on the spot doing it, often what you get in uh, Chinese and Japanese or uh, even Korean students is they just stand there and don't say anything. 
uh, which really slows things down. So what we have here is a, an ability to allow the students to go slow, but also to take time to think without being embarrassed or shy about it. And I think that's really the advantage. The game space, the, the virtual world, allows it to have a little bit of a feeling of excitement rather than in boredom. And it brings the game to it, even though it's not all the excitement of a, of a game. So there's a lot of counterintuitive things going on here, but I find that it really does allow the students who are serious to really practice their skill, to uh, practice their English, to practice their business understanding all in one. Too low for us because our resistance is very low. So with the low price we can accept is best price, just three thousand and five hundred fifty dollars. So three hundred three thousand and five hundred fifty dollars is, is your bottom line. Uh, can you say again? Sorry. Uh, what is your resistance? What? Just one. So <laughs> the low price I can accept is three thousand and uh, five hundred fifty dollars. See, this is really amazing how you get students saying things like, "This is your bottom line. What's your resistance point?" This would really be hard for students to pick up in a regular class. You know, they might be able to do it in an acting kind of show, which is not really taken the heart or gets into the memory. I just love the way they really use it here. And then you see that they negotiated. Both are giving pressure. They're both, you know, putting on, uh, trying to maximize their situation. But then they become kind of friends in making the deal. I mean, it's, it's so much like a real negotiation. Of course, we don't know who's taking advantage of who, or what kind of strategy they've used. Whether it's cooperation or win-win or win-lose. We don't know any of these things. Co competitiveness. But it's just awesome to see how this really works because it's so much like a real situation. At least way closer to a real negotiation practice than you could ever get in a classroom and so you know it's hard to hard to argue with that here we have an example of doing some maintenance here i have this uh, sticky note here but students went ahead and added their own so let me see if I can get rid of mine here. Eat. Yes. Yeah, there you go. It's just one of the problems of, you know, you give students some level of flexibility in manipulating the space, but then, um, you know, they're not experts in it to give it a try. So I encourage as much freedom and experimentation as possible, but that does mean for the teacher running the space, you've got to pay attention, you got to watch things because they drop a lot of objects and manipulate things. Uh, it can really slow down the simulation, even ruining it. So you've got to be careful. Here's the echo problem coming in. So we can see this avatar on the left probably is the one with the issue. Um, not much I can do about it after the first few weeks. I've really tried my best to try to get the technical side done. But there's always this problem. It's one of the biggest headaches in the space is the echo controlling the headphone microphone. Okay, here we go with a good example of the sound situation outside quiet. Walk in. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 900. Wow. Walk out. Walk in. Uh, uh, okay. So that's a great example of how the soundproofing works. Inside, they can hear each other, but they can't hear anything from the outside, and vice versa. Outside cannot hear anything from the inside, so it allows secret negotiations or planning to go on. Let's go in and listen. So how many uh, do, do you can, can, can you order me? 
Are you checking now? Yeah, I'm checking now. Uh, I can okay. offer you 200, 227 units. <laughs> Twenty-eight. Take your map. Uh, well, no, sorry. See you later. Okay. okay. It's a great example of almost every semester there's a few really motivated students and at least one student who's super motivated. And that's an example in this class of a super motivated student who very early on checked out all the rules, looked at all the options, tried to figure out what the parameters are, and even often talks to me individually, finds me on campus find, uh, asking about the rules of the game, how they work. And of course, one of the things about this game is, like a real negotiation, you cannot control all that you know, is going on. You may do a great negotiation, but your boss has a different target or doesn't think it's important, and that's incorporated into the game. So students who are very motivated very often come up with these issues, like why, how can I do a good negotiation, but still my group score doesn't increase that much, while another group doesn't do that great, and they get a higher score. And things like that, the prices, the flex points, the trade-offs, all those complexities, and those good students really get involved in that. And I find that by having the game a little bit complicated, which seems overly so at, at times, certainly makes it a little bit challenging for me and many students. Uh, you really challenge those excellent students, and that's what I really like. Again, hard to argue with that, although it is a bit overwhelming at times for the teacher. And I suspect for some of the students early on, probably about one third, kind of find it difficult, uh, difficult mountain to climb up. But again, uh, I think I'm aiming for the top, the best, to really improve those students who are motivated, who have some skill, rather than to dumb it down, uh, which is just really doesn't get anybody improving at all. Let's go in here and see if there's a negotiation. Again, we would not hear it from the outside because it's soundproof, so we can walk in and see. Listen. Mm -hmm. Hello, Group 3. Hello. Uh, we can provide average quality and average delivery. Okay, that's good. <laughs> um. Hello. Hello. Hello, where are you? <laughs> okay. Uh how's your quality and the delivery oh, delivery? Hello. Hello. We have average quality and average delivery. Okay. Um See, that's a good example of students using a hybrid communication. They're using the virtual world. They're also using text. You can hear them knocking on their keyboards. Again, I don't want to discourage that. Uh, any way that works is great. And in real negotiations, you can't stop people from using back channels and texting each other. So in that way, it is kind of kind of realistic. Uh, people do like to use the audio, and at least it's there to make communication smoother. But if I was just to limit it to that, I think it might be difficult. So uh, you can see that a lot of times people, the avatars are standing here. They don't seem to be doing anything, but they actually could be doing a lot, such as texting. A little bit of dorm action there. Sometimes people are in their dorms, so a lot of background sound can be going on. Another important reason early in the semester to train students to use the push to talk function rather than having an open mic all the time. Here we have a nice negotiation going on, and again, stopping, thinking, considering, calculating, probably consulting with other group members. So, it's a little bit slow going, but the virtual world allows that slow going. 
but three three thousand and three hundred doesn't fit our base price. Um, what's your resistance? What's your price? And our bottom line is three thousand and five hundred and fifty. How about Prada A? Hello. Oh. Not Prada B. It's okay, both. Uh. just saw some avatars drop in. That dropping in is because they use the transport to feature. That is where you can click on a user like this and you can click this icon here which says go to user and they just drop in. It's a great way to find people fast and it's one of the kind of unreal things in the in the virtual world but pretty cool. Very handy. And we can finish product B and then we move on to product A. Yes. So, uh, we we'll just say Prada B for three thousand and three hundred dollars for five units, five hundred units. But we will get a negative point if we sell you that price. Can you raise uh, your price? Mm. How about? $3,400 How about 3500 because our bottom line is very high, so if we provide you 3,400, we will get the negative point. Let me check about it. Okay, take your time. Here you can see I've turned in, turned on all the avatars' names. When they have brackets around them, that means they're muted. When they don't have brackets, their microphone is live. And when they talk, their names over their heads will turn red. I kind of like to turn that off for screen recording, just so that we don't have people's names flying around. I use uh, emails for the students, but we also allow them to use custom names. And if they have groupings together, for example here, Nathaniel and Casey, they are two people using one avatar, which is a great way to save bandwidth, of course. Also a nice way to help each other. And they also do something very smart, where you see here they say that Nathaniel and Casey are sellers. So by putting their status of their seller or buying situation on their name, everybody can see it as they walk around above their head, and they are group five. So I never ever thought of such a thing. Uh, students are quite ingenious sometimes and it's quite a great solution. Again, I'd, I would like to require that, but getting a little bit technical, students get overload if I told everyone to do that. Uh, it was enough just to tell students they can group together and if they do group together, change your name over your avatar's head to be your two user names. 480 dollars. Um, are you still there? Yes. Because the price didn't meet our bottom line, you know, so, um, so um, can you... Can you... Um, if we if offer we you Prada A, how, how much would you pay that? Um, uh, three 
Alright, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.